What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Boompa World. Growing up mostly in the 2000s, there were plenty of trends marketed relentlessly to kids that were impossible to keep up with. Spy gear, tech deck dudes, then it evolved to like electronics like UB Funkies and yearly game releases like Tony Hawk. But basically it came down to a kid begging their parents, please get this shit for me. And one time that paid off was great and it worked out for me in my life. My sister begged my parents to get us Guitar Hero. I didn't even get it for any reason. She just begged like day after day. And eventually they cracked and we went to GameStop and we got Guitar Hero 3 for the Wii. A whole little bundle with Slash on the cover. Oh, it was fucking hype. And I remember playing on my neighbor's rock band set for 360 also with the drum and mic setup. Good ass times, man. Plenty of memories. Plenty of. Let's not get sidetracked. Let's start with the history and career mode of the first game, The Origins. So put on your Doc Martens, your leather and lace and a chain, pick up a drug habit, because it's time to rock, damn it. Let's dive right into the OG Guitar Hero from its development to career mode. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want to see more content similar to this, be sure to subscribe for more Blue Loud. Kinda with that same angsty rockstar energy as plenty of games from the time and pretty much all the media, like games like SSX and Tony Hawk, uh, Guitar Hero pretty much ran that with that aesthetic and pushed it to the absolute limit. Uh, this game was developed by Harmonix, who later went on to make the Rock Band games after they sold Guitar Hero for a bag, uh, because they knew they had something special on their hands. The original Guitar Hero was actually inspired by Guitar Freaks, uh, well at least Red Octane, a hardware developer who made, like, Dance Dance Revolution pads were inspired by an arcade game. The publisher saw how much people liked the guitar controller at arcades and thought bringing it to the West would pay off, and it fucking did. Uh, they made a shit ton of money and made a whole market. Uh, but when it came to the game's soundtrack, they definitely had to modify the tracklist as the game was developed. As some were cleared and some songs were just too expensive, uh, but they still wanted to have like classic hits that people remembered, so they forked out a lot of money for licensing. That bitted a lot of chunk of like their development was just licensing out music. Uh, but Guitar Hero dropped exclusively to the PS2, uh, but eventually later games spread to every console, including places like the Wii U and also the DS, which was special in itself, even if it gave 10 year old me early onset arthritis. I think if you had the PSP, you only got Rock Band though, so that's tough. Also, randomly, I was at a game store and saw Guitar Hero actually drop music books with like all the songs from the games to actually like learn to play on the guitar, which is a cool tie-in uh, that shows they cared. I got my stickered up PS2 guitar from a guy moving out of his college place. And it also included a flat screen TV for 30 bucks. Shout out Facebook Marketplace. Uh, but yeah, me and my good friend Kendi will be conquering the career mode. But it's only one player, unlike future games like Band Hero. I guess we're gonna have to pass the guitar back and forth. Take your turn, don't be impatient, stay locked in, and let's get onto the game in uh, the career mode. Right off the bat, I'm glad this game went with the heavy stylized rocker edgy graphics over like realism because the PS2 probably would have showed its age. The colors and lights in each area show they really like gave a shit and like made the screen eye popping. So, st like the style. They were really thoughtful in like how they created every environment. Jagged corners are there, obviously, but it almost plays into the style of imperfection and harshness that is like in the game's art direction, down to the font and pause menu. We choose a character over like an interesting set of casts, all with their own little backstories, which is cool. Later games you can customize your own, but for now I picked the British punk guy for no other reason than his little mohawk. For being the first of its kind, Guitar Hero's soundtrack to me is banging enough. I love rock and roll. To I Am Iron Man and the one song that became the theme song to Duck Dynasty. <laughs> On top of that, it has a non Freddy rendition of Killer Queen. Everything's covers. It's They said it was stylistic because the story is a cover band and I suppose it adds up. It's crazy also the attention to detail they went with guitars. Uh, the vocals wasn't weren't so much, but the guitars and like settings. Apparently, they were like looking at pictures of people performing and stuff, trying to see the amp settings to get the sounds just right. And I don't know, but songs like Fat Lip by Sum 41 will really have you shredding, and the ones you unlock, like Get Ready to Rock and Guitar Hero, were easily like my favorites in the game. It lists the songs on this like back of the class looking notebook paper with doodles that look for like eighth grade edgy. 
Uh, look at that S in set list. Uh, it reminded me of little me though. I'd always be drawing on my notebooks and shit, uh, like little creatures, little doodles that look kind of scary. But yeah, the game is riddled with nice touches like that that just give it attitude. Quips on the loading screen or urinal flushing after you enter your high score. Cutscenes before each show showing like an explosion or some bullshit. Just an overall disdain for manners and cleanliness as a whole. Which was the point in 2005, it was just to be like a jackass. Uh, yeah. But in the career mode, each performance nets you some money and it shows a graph showing all these people making money off you. A little silly jab at the music industry, I guess. Yeah, you can spend your money on new guitars, skins, songs to play, art and videos talking about the game in the shop. Uh, I love the shop. I love any game with a shop. I, ne I need the shop. There's also characters you can unlock. Uh, one being like Izzy Sparks who looks kind of like David Bowie and the other one being the Grim fucking Reaper. And yeah, I'm grinding for him. He's $8,000 and you only get like 100 to like 500 per show unless it's like the finale. But yeah, having an unlock shop always gives the game a lot of replayability. It makes the grind worth it, more enjoyable. I actually get something out of it or it makes me feel like I get something out of it. But yeah, you work your way up, playing in the basement at the start in the low income neighborhood with mom at the top of the stairs. Uh, then you go to like a lo through some local acts, like some small places. You go to like the toxic summer festival, some mid tier clubs. You end up at the garden, this giant ass like venue, and you ascend to rocker guitar hero status. Spoiler alert. All you gotta do is kill like 25 shows, uh, 25 songs, really. And, I mean, you don't even have to kill them, you, you just have to pass them, you just don't have to fail. And you'll be there in no time. Uh, the later venues, I was still knocking my guitar hero rust off. Uh, I haven't played in years and. Kinda had to rely on using star power at the right times to pass. It was really hard to put down. And it was just really rewarding after completing a song that we sucked at. We high-fived like it was fucking 2005. We just beat a hard-ass level. Yahoo! But I think of all the venues, uh, I preferred Red Octanes the most with the colors and lights. It just hit that perfect like stride of style. Guitar Hero vibes, bruh. Speaking of the venues, there's a bonus video in the shop that shows how they made the venues and how much work went into each one, and it's so fucking cool behind the scenes. And I put the links to that video and the other Guitar Hero bonus videos down in the description. And that, those videos are more interesting than this, honestly. So yeah, if you want to watch more Guitar Hero content, and if you're in a Guitar Hero mood, watch those stuff. They were so attentive to detail, they made things in the environment change if you were doing good, and I didn't even notice that at first, but like if you're in the basement, if you're rocking hard enough, like the basement window will have police lights shine through the window. That's really cool, and uh, if you're and you're lucky now, you kids can just watch it on YouTube and not have to shell out $300 per video in the Guitar Hero shop. But I mean, what do you expect? You hit the buttons on the guitar, strum, and you either pass or fail. The atmosphere around it and the peripheral you're using adds most of the flavor. But I talked to one of my coworkers uh, about Guitar Hero and he told me he used to play with the controller. I was like, bro, you're a psychopath. <laughs> and end off with some sore fingers. You, like I said earlier, ascend. You turn into this great ball of rock and the heavens open up for your shredding and guitaring. I don't know, but I love the vocabulary, aesthetic, the terminology, everything about this game. I'm just a sucker for it, bruh. Even though this game, even though this guy on the loading screen always kind of reminded me of Hitler when I looked like for like a split second out of like my peripherals. But yeah, damn it, this game is awesome. It probably made so many rock fans and emos and goths in my generation. I know for a fact it improved guitar sales and it's a lot of good memories with friends and even just playing recently it was, it's been a lot of good times and now I'm in a Guitar Hero phase take a look at the history and play through this banger of a game just to see where it all started and to let these kids know this is the rhythm games we were on. Guitar Hero may have overdid it like a lot of other Activision's properties, Call of Duty, Tony Hawk, fucking whatever else probably. We still love and give our flowers to the legends of Guitar Hero. It's still fun. You would still play it. If you've seen it and you had a chance to play it, you had time, play it, pull up. Every dude my age at one point was 11 kind of chubby cheeks and they wanted to be a guitar hero. I want to thank Kennedy for pushing us through because I was sleepy and the last two songs were hard, but we did it all in one night and became the shredders you see before you. More guitar hero content to come, but yeah, the first game is a gem. Great soundtrack, um, although later games are better, like 3 is like probably the go, I don't know, I haven't played them all. 
great graphics and style for 2005, vibrant colors, and just a great atmosphere that makes a simple rhythm game strike a chord and become a classic. The heads up display is big and wide on one or two players, uh, which sometimes randomly is a problem in newer games too. Everything is so clear to see, you know when your star power is ready, you know when how much combo you have, you know how much your score is, you know how many stars. Uh, but yeah, they had games like Amp and Frequency and shit, so I guess they were like, already knew what they were doing already. But yeah, that's really the first Guitar Hero from its head to toe, lead up to drop and everything in between. And my experience with it and how you can ascend. But yeah, comment your best Guitar Hero memory and definitely leave a like if you enjoyed, dislike if you didn't, and yeah, subscribe if you want more Boomba World. I love you all. Don't ever forget that. Yahoo!